You're watching Wired Up Retro, it's episode number 69, and in today's episode we're going to be going into adding rumble to controllers. Now, we're going to touch on the history at first, but eventually we're going to find our way into a controller mod that has to do with a controller, a favorite of mine, the Nijicon, made by Namco back in the mid-90s that uh, doesn't have rumble on board but we're going to add some rumble to it to play some playstation 4 games and i'll show you how to get it accomplished it's really not that difficult so i'm looking forward to showing you that at the end of the video but before we get to that i do want to show you some uh, some of the historical facts about rumble in controllers and adding it to controllers that didn't have the rumble on board so uh, when we first go back in time we look at the nintendo 64 and the controller that they rolled out with the console initially didn't have rumble on board but with the game Star Fox uh, 64 which came out in the uh, late 90s um, along with that game what you could get a rumble pack for your n64 controller and this was a pretty exciting advent and it perked a few people up at Sony and they thought, hmm, maybe we ought to do the same thing since we're competing with them. So they came out with the DualShock controller for the PlayStation 1. It had the rumble motors built into the controller, unlike the N64 controller had. So what happened to all the PlayStation 1 controllers that didn't have rumble? A lot of people were like, well, I want to keep using my controller. So Mad Cats kind of provided a uh, way to solve that problem by making a wrist rumbler, which you could basically uh, use a little Velcro strap uh, to put around your wrist, so you could have rumbling on your wrist while using that old school PlayStation 1 controller. And uh, actually the dual analog pad, which was um, the precursor to the DualShock, uh, it had no rumble motors, but you could use it with that. And obviously you could use it with your racing controllers, whether it be this one or the Ultra Racer or some of those RC type controllers that came that had no rumble like the Hori Zero Tech controller. No rumble motors on board, but uh, definitely fun controller if you like RC handheld type controllers to play your PlayStation 1 games with. So yeah, adding a wrist rumbler could kind of add to the fun. Now another console that had an addable rumble uh, motor on board was the Sega Dreamcast. They came out with the uh, jump pack for the uh, Sega Dreamcast controller. So um, some uh, third party controller uh, co manufacturers came out with their own jump packs. They called them the Tremor Pack or other crazy names that kind of sound like jump pack. So um, that was a whole lot of fun for the Dreamcast uh, controllers. You could add that in if you liked the idea of having rumble. Now, of course, after Dreamcast, all the consoles that came after that were putting automatically Rumble in their controller um, built in. So there was an exception, though, and that was during the days of the PlayStation 3. Uh, for whatever reason, Sony decided, well, we're going to do this six-axis thing, and let's just go ahead and remove Rumble, because there's some sort of lawsuit we're trying to avoid paying money to a company for, so we'll just remove the the rumble from the controllers and we won't call them dual shot controllers anymore but we'll call them six axis controllers because of this nice new feature that lets you like hold the controller and you can steer your game like this and you know there was some interesting games that came out that used the six axis um, some of them were not too terribly awesome um, one of those was uh, Lair and a lot of people just wanted to use the thumbsticks and play it the old way but the game wouldn't allow it initially it wouldn't eventually they caved and sony allowed it to be control with a thumbstick a couple of years after its initial release um, another game that really wasn't that well controlled with the tilting was motorstorm just really touchy and um, it just it wasn't implemented properly so i think a lot of people were kind of disappointed by the uh, six axis. So um, there was a company though that said, hey, I remember the wrist rumbler. And this co company is called Pega. And I have one of these. This is made in China. Pega P3 vibrating bag. Now this you could actually put onto your uh, six axis controller. I'm gonna show you a little unboxing and uh, show you how it goes on and, and exactly what's involved with getting this to work. 
All right, so before we go ahead and remove the packaging from the item, I do want to show you the, uh, what it says on the box. The effective vibration could be adjusted at will within the range um, with FM radio. So I'm figuring it uses radio waves. As a collector, I definitely like to preserve the packaging as best as possible. I don't know why, but I just do. A lot of people just throw this stuff out. Even collectors do, but eh, not this one. Okay. Go ahead and open it. So let's take a look at it, flip it around. We have the on and off switch right here. We have power light, the uh, USB, which will pass through to this side. We've got the Vibra potentiometer, the dial, headphone jack, a reset button, and the link button. Okay, and you can see this is probably a very fragile part, so I'm going to have to be careful we don't snap that off putting it onto the controller. And this is what plugs into your, the back of your PlayStation 3 console. Interesting. Your FM radio antenna. Pretty cool. All right, let's see how this plugs into the PlayStation 3. All right, so I got the back of my PlayStation 3 showing here. This is my fat PS3 model, and that is going to slide into that. And you're not going to be able to use HDMI. There we go. So just to confirm, this is my six-axis controller. Let's go ahead and see how this will go on. I think you just mount it from... Yeah, insert it from the back first. Take it. All right. And it came slid up above the front here. It's on. Interesting. I don't think it'll affect the controller in much of a negative way, although my finger might be bumping up against it a little bit. It's, it's all right. Kind of interesting design. Not bad. I'm going to have to charge it up. Now before I go charge that up, I do want to show you one more thing. This is a slim console. This is the CECH-2001A PlayStation 3. So if you try to plug this in here, all right, it does go in, but there's a little gap there. I don't know if you can see it, but a little bit of a gap. So I do have, I don't know if that would be affecting its use or not, so I want to show you this, and this is an extender. So you plug this in here, and then that uh, device could be plugged in here. Okay, I've got Daytona USA up on the screen, and my controller's all plugged in with headphones. What I find is I put the headphones on, and I get FM radio stations, okay? So you click this button, and it keeps cycling to the next available FM station and press the button it goes to the next available station so you're hearing all sorts of tunes and uh, you can press the button to the right of it and it will take you to the very first station and not every time but if you press a couple more times to cycle to the next couple of stations suddenly you'll get the sound from the game coming through your headphones and it's not necessarily stereo to me it it doesn't sound like stereo, it sounds like mono, but maybe it's vaguely FM stereo? I am not sure. All right, so right now I've got it tuned to some FM station. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this uh, onto my game audio. Okay, all right, I've got it. So let's go ahead and press the start button. We'll get started here. One thing I've also noticed is the potentiometer that you can dial to the right with 
even the music playing in the game, it rumbles to that music. Or you can dial it down a little bit and then it won't be rumbling except for when you slam into the wall or ram into another car um, or maybe you hear a brake sound. So it's all audio based. And again, it sounds mono to me. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Now it's rumbling. It's just a buzzer. It's not any exotic uh, dual shock type rumbling. But my six axis does rumble now. Now if you really crank it all the way to the top, it's constantly buzzing. It's just a buzzer. Now if I choose to listen to an FM station while playing the game, it's a cool thing is I can get it vibrating to the beat of the music, which is pretty interesting. It's definitely a unique object to own. I mean, if you're into uh, trying unique ways to play your games, this is definitely unique. All right, down to 10th place. There we go, here. Get around these guys. Fighting for sixth, maybe? Fifth? Sixth, all right. So yeah, it, it's working wirelessly. I'm getting audio-based rumble. Pretty interesting. I kind of like it, it's fun. It's kind of freaky, but also cool. All right, so let's move on to the next part of Wired Up Retro, and I will show you a new project that some of you might be interested in, getting uh, controllers from the PlayStation 1 era for racing games um, dialed in for rumble. All right, let's give it a shot. So back on Wired Up Retro episode 53, I showed this 3D printed wheel that you could attach to your DualShock 4 to play your PlayStation 4 games, enabling you to not only have some cool analog control, but rumble as well in the controller. So um, this is probably, so far, the best option. Um, another option might be to use the Namco Nijicon controller. And in Wired Up Retro episode 40, I showed you how to use this on the PlayStation 4, as well as other consoles like PS3, Xbox 360, and Xbox One. The way I did this was I took the connector for the uh, Nijicon and I plugged in the P2, P3, and PC controller converter. So that just plugs in here. It's a USB connector that would normally go into a, either PS3 or PC, but into, uh, or this is going to get plugged into the Cronus Max Plus. And uh, again, episode 40 of Wired Up Retro goes into this. So here's my Cronus Max Plus, and that just gets plugged right direct into that. And this will now work on the PlayStation 4 by uh, getting some scripts running in this. They're called GPC scripts. And once you've got those installed or programmed on board, uh, then you're ready to roll. But there's no rumble. So I'm doing this episode because I kind of want to go into a way to do this. Now, this isn't my first time in, in getting a Nijicon rumbling. Let's go back to Wired Up Retro episode number 66. In that episode, I showed you how to get the Nijicon rumbling on the Nintendo Switch for certain racing games. It may not be all racing games that'll work with this, but a good number of them work well. So in episode 66 of Wired Up Retro, I used this Magic NS controller adapter on the Switch, and that basically enabled my whole setup to rumble when attaching Joy-Cons to, uh, or a Joy-Con, to the back of the uh, Nijicon or other PlayStation 1 racing controllers. And on a number of Nintendo Switch games, it was rumbling and working well. It only really took one Joy-Con to accomplish that. So I took this adapter and I unplugged it from my Switch, went over to the PS3 since it's also PS3 compatible, thinking maybe this would also work to get this controller rumbling on PS3 games. 
But what I found was um, it was it was an either or situation. You either use this and have no rumble when that's attached to it, or you used this and then you could um, not use this essentially. So, but this would then start rumbling. So you couldn't really combine them like you could on the switch. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of convoluted, but anyways, at that point I realized, well, maybe I need a different adapter than the Magic NS. So I bought the Magic S Pro, which is a similar adapter made by the same company from what I understand. Now this is a PS4 compatible adapter. So when I plugged all of this into my PS4 and I had this uh, attached to my Nijikon and I got them all synced so that this was recognizing not only the input from my Nijikon but also the wireless input from this, um, again, I ran into, um, unfortunately, no compatibility with the rumbling when using this, okay? So what I have decided to do is to use these two controllers and attach them somehow to the Nijikon. Now, when using these, like accelerating and changing gears or firing weapons or changing views, you know, you can also use the twist function. As long as this is being used, let's say gas here, brake here, they will rumble and you can definitely steer this way. So how would I attach these to the Nijikon? That's a good question. So I put some thought into it and I bought these iPlay for in-switch hand strap uh, accessories, okay? So let's pull them on out and take a look at these. Okay. So I thought to myself, well, these are kind of screwed in. Unru just undo the screws and remove the, the wristband. So yeah, let me show you that. All right, so I got the screws removed, and if you flip these over, you can see there's a little slit there, or a gap, and when you open it up, you can see where the holes are for those tiny screws, and there's these little um, pillars that uh, go, that's where the screws screw into, okay? And this blue one's the same. Let's, let's go ahead and get this into here, and we'll get this blue one into this one. Get it in there the right way. All right. And so then you've got to come up with a way to connect this. So let's flip it over. So my thought was, well, we could remove each and every one of these screws and then get screws that are a little bit longer and then get some sort of plastic, like, oh, for instance, this big ice tub that I bought for around $3. And this particular um, plastic, I think it's not extremely thick, but it is very durable. So let's go ahead and make a pattern that would work to get these all connected. To make a pattern, I'll go ahead and draw on a piece of paper where these screw holes are. The screw hole there. So I would just take it out and then, let's see here, that's going to go about there, so we would need this to go in between. further and if it's wrong we'll cut it a different way I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out okay so I got the pattern cut and this side would go like that and then this would go there I think I'm gonna have to to draw this in a little bit I'm gonna have to narrow that slightly I'll just put a little piece of tape on it 
bring it in a little bit. That'll probably be the right, right size now. I'll just make sure I measure it and double check it. And then I'll use this very same pattern flipping it to um, get this side plastic um, cut out from the ice bucket. Okay, so this is the piece of plastic that I've decided to use, and we're gonna go ahead and cut the pattern, or get the pattern set up here. I have one right here, and then the other one right here should work. So I did end up cutting a little bit more off to um, allow it to fit, okay? And you, you can see it could go this way or that way, but these are a little closer to the edge than these are. So you want that here, okay, on this inner side. And then the, uh, I already pre-placed these tiny screws so we could get started on getting it into its position. I think we got it. And then we start screwing down these screws. Okay. Looks like it tightened very well. But that one's fastened. Alright, so it's really in there very well. Alright, let's move on and do the blue side. Here 
goes in the other way first. There we go. So I'll show you how to set this up properly. If you watched Wired Up Retro episode 40, it provides all the details of using the Nijicon on the PlayStation 4, as well as other consoles, without rumble added. Today's project for adding rumble to your controller has two big differences in the setup, and that doesn't mean you shouldn't watch Wired Up Retro number 40. I would recommend that you do. But uh, I want to go through those two big differences, so just pay attention here. All right, number one, you plug in that Magic S Pro adapter to the PlayStation 4 console first, and then the second adapter, which is the Cronus Max Plus. And the second big difference is the Cronus Max Plus has to be programmed so that the input, which is here, is set to PlayStation 3 controllers, while the output is set for Xbox 360. That's a little different from our first ep uh, episode on the Nijicon. Because you're setting it up this way, you'll be using a wired 360 controller, not a wireless one with the uh, wire added, but the actual legit wired controller to um, actually authenticate your uh, Cronus Max Plus to recognize other uh, controllers within this adapter. And by the way, this adapter accepts a 360 controller and converts it to PS4. So it, it accepts all sorts of different kinds of controllers. So I'm just letting you know that. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in. So when you authenticate, this is waiting for authentication. You just plug it in right there. And I'm gonna put it on script number zero. Okay, now you can see that lit up it's authenticated. Now when you unplug it, you don't need this anymore. This is when you're going to do another adapter. That is this one, the P3 and PC converter, okay, which I told you about before. Plug that in right here, okay. And then into that, you're gonna plug your modded, modded Nijicon right there, okay. Once that's in, then you're going to change the script. You change it to one. I also have three other scripts right there, all the way out to four. They're different scripts that do different things. So again, watch Wired Up Retro uh, number 40 to have that explained to you. All right, so this is properly set up. And another thing we need to do is to press, by the way, this is in blue mode for the uh, PlayStation 4 console. If you click it once, it'll blink Okay, we want it fast blinking. Now once it's fast blinking, then you're gonna take your switch controller. Okay, there we go. So you're gonna have both of them removed. Okay, so right now, I wanna actually press the left button, the left Joy-Con power button first, and then while I'm pressing that, switch and do this one. There we go. And, and then they hopefully will both connect properly. I think you have to press a button. Yeah, that, that worked. So now they're both connected as controllers, controller one, technically, and then put it back in here. So make sure you read the description below about the Kronos Max Plus settings, as well as GPC script information. So um, another thing you want to be aware of, certain games on the PlayStation 4 can have this stick be assigned to up for gas, down for brake, and if you set it up like that, you will get uh, some semblance of analog control using this controller. Now the scripts for the uh, uh, Nijicon that are going through this Kronos Max, some of them involved uh, using these buttons, analog buttons, for feathering your gas, feathering your brake. But that, this controller isn't going to be used in this project. You're not going to be pressing these buttons. You'll be pressing these buttons using this stick or this stick. So actually, you probably won't be using this stick. But this one you might be using if your game allows for gas up, break down, and that enables for some analog control, at least some semblance of analog control. Hopefully that makes sense. So definitely look in the description below. All right, so I got the PlayStation 4 game Moto Racer 4 on board with the Nijicon with Rumble. Such a versatile controller. Let's give it a shot. I'm gonna accelerate with 
trigger right and brake with trigger left, thrusting with the B button on the Joy-Con, which is this equivalent to X on a PlayStation controller. That's the boost. All right, I'm getting actual uh, rumbling on the right controller right now as I accelerate. I'm braking a little bit now. The left one's giving me a little chitter-chatter feedback occasionally. It's like the grip of the tires on the road, I think, are making it responsive. It definitely has a haptic feedback kind of feel. The whole controller does. Right. Yeah, I felt a little left controller rumble there on that curve. Let's try letting off the gas. Yeah, the right one does chatter a little bit more than the left. You know, this game is just really fun with a Nijikai with this twist action. It does have a lot of analog. Um, throw to it, or you could say the responsive aspect of having such accuracy with the angles, it's, it's great for a motorcycle experience. All right, let's give Radial G Racing Revolved a chance on the PS4 with the uh, Vibricon, otherwise known as the Nijacon. Yes, that's the only thing I could come up with. All right, you guys be the judge. Leave a comment below. What do you think the name of this should be? All right, I am getting rumbling in primarily the right controller. Now this does have a brake, and let me press the brake and see if I get some left Joy-Con rumble. Okay, so far not getting a lot in the left. Jump this. There should be some ramps up ahead. I got some left feedback that time. Left controller does rumble. I have to tell you guys, I did try Wipeout on the PS4, the newer version, Wipeout Omega, and unfortunately it was just a little bit lacking in the, uh, the rumble department. So yeah, a whole lot of fun. Let's try a couple of PS3 games. Okay, so I've got my PS3 fired up and my Magic NS adapter is working with my Cronus Max. So let's go ahead and get over here to, let's try National B. All right, here we go, Gran Turismo 6. A little braking action. I got the rumbling on the left controller when I hit the brake there. Now I'm not getting any rumbling when I'm just accelerating with the right trigger. Now, I've also got the game set so you can use that right thumbstick to press up for gas, down for brake, and get some analog control. That might maybe wake up the uh, rumble on that side. Oh, it's and my right controller is not rumbling. So yeah, it looks like it'll, I'll just be having left controller rumbling only when I use it to do the braking, like right now. Fun control. I'm definitely enjoying the Nijikon for Gran Turismo 6. As a fan of the Nijikon, it goes without saying that you won't have the best Nijikon experience 
unless you play a little bit of Wipeout. And this is the PlayStation 3 version. And we're gonna give it a shot here. Get to the campaign. Okay, here we go. So I just got a nice right Joy-Con rumble there. Another one. I'm going to pull back on that thumbstick so I can lift the nose of the craft. There we go. Air brakes are working great. And here we go. Got some nice left Joy-Con rumble there. And right one rumbled there. So I'm getting both Joy-Cons rumbling this time. Much better than Gran Turismo 6, where I only got the one Joy-Con rumbling. It must be something about the way these games were programmed and the way my setup's working. So, interesting. You know, each game is probably going to be a little different when it comes to your experience. Some better than others. This is awesome, actually. <clears throat> really enjoying it. Well, I sure hope you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Having the experience of playing with this very versatile controller was just incredibly awesome. Uh, for those of you who haven't experienced the NijiCon, I would definitely uh, advise you try to find one. Maybe go to eBay, go to your local game store and grab one. And then uh, attach your Joy-Cons if you want it to rumble. It does work. You just have to set it up the right way. All right, so uh, leave a comment below if you enjoyed the episode, and definitely a like. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel as of yet, definitely hit that subscribe button, tap the bell for notifications, and I will look forward to uh, sharing new videos with you in the not-too-distant future. It should be coming up pretty soon. All right, you guys keep gaming out there and having fun. All right, we'll talk later. Take care.